Hello, and welcome to The Shortlist. I'm Darcy Bits, and today I'm going to be looking at all of the cards made with Urza's AI that we made for the AI Magic Showdown. If you haven't seen the AI Magic Showdown, highly recommend it. It's the most recent gameplay video on this channel uh, in which me and my partner spent one week making cards with Urza's AI and then assembling decks using you know up to four copies of each card we made. Uh, it made for a really interesting level of, like, it wasn't, like, limited, but it also wasn't literally every card in forever, right? It was sort of like a, like a, like a mini standard, or, uh, people in comments actually refer to sort of, like, kitchen table magic, right? Where you only have the cards you have, right? But there's still the standard rules of you can have as many copies, right? Up to four copies. So we, with that, uh, great video, highly recommend it, please check it out. Uh, feels weird to say that about my own stuff, but, you know... I like my work, and I think I should be proud of it. Point is, you're going to be seeing some cards here today that if you want to see them for the first time in gameplay, check that out before you watch this video. Otherwise, we will be looking at all of the cards that were forged that we bothered to save. And that is why this show is called The Shortlist, because we are looking at every card that we made and went, that might be good enough. Let's throw it in. Let's save it for now. Some of these cards actually made it into the deck. Some of these cards did not. Um, there are a bunch for me that I drew art for, even though they didn't even make it into the deck, because I wanted to move cards around in the digital, the digital tabletop when deck building. So I made, like, I made a very short, 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 short list, and drew art for all those cards, and then I decided what cards I was actually running. So, some cards won't have art, didn't make it into that list. Some cards do have art and didn't make it into the deck, and some cards did make it into the deck, but we never saw them in the gameplay. So there's a lot to cover here. We're been... we are going to be doing this in a three-part structure, uh, just because I they'd be unreasonably long videos otherwise. <laughs> and uh, so we're going through about 85, 90 or so cards today, and next week there will be another video, and you understand how parts work, which is great. Uh, there is no order. These are just in whatever order the internal ID of the cards sort of ended up having them structured in the, in the folder. Uh, I just have this as like a slideshow ass like um, element in OBS, and I'm just going to tab through them. I, I don't know what cards we're seeing today. This is an overly long intro. Hi, everybody. I, I should cut this. Woo! Anyway, point being is that I do a lot of the looking at cards videos, um, and they are whatever Urzea happens to generate. And those are fun, but here we are only looking at cards that I already previously decided were interesting enough that they might go into the deck. So I'm expecting only bangers, as they say. So... <laughs> With all of that said, let's get started. Our first card is Petal Dancer, a 2-mana blue 2-2 two -two whale. If you haven't seen the gameplay video, I played a whale-themed deck. Of course, during the forging, I didn't necessarily land on that theme super early. So we're going to see non-whales as well, but it's mostly whales. It is a 2-2 two -two whale. It's blue, and whenever you gain life, put a plus and plus encounter on Petal Dancer. There was a minor life gain theme in in the forging i ended up not including the life game cards in the actual deck because i didn't think i had enough activators but i did have like a folder that was just life game cards and life game activators both pay up and activators and there's like a decent thing there if we were playing like 40 card decks it would maybe have been worth it but in 60 card format i didn't feel like i had enough for it to be relevant but i think this card's pretty good right two mana two two gains could account on whenever gains life i don't know what the actual like, going rate for this effect is in real magic. There is that... This effect shows up a lot, and it always seems really good when I'm playing against it, at least. Maybe not in blue, right? It usually shows up in either green or white, but still, pretty, pretty cool. Reanimated Blood Pack is a 4-mana 3-4 blue Leviathan. We ended up getting a lot of, like, sea creatures that weren't whales, and some of them almost made it into the deck, but I don't think any actually did, if I recall correctly. Whenever a reanimated blood pack or another non-token creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on reanimated blood pack. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may put a plus one plus one counter 
on a reanimated blood pack. Now, while that sounds like it's just the same thing twice and it should just say two plus one plus one counters, what I think is interesting about this is that one triggers off of non-tokens and one triggers off of anything, including tokens, which is just kind of an interesting, like, different take on that effect. Usually we see the non-token clause exist purely to stop infinite shenanigans, right? Um, obviously, infinite shenanigans do exist, like Scurry Oak in actual magic, being able to just get a counter, and then uh, that says whenever something gains a counter, get a, a squirrel, and then the squirrel does a counter, and it uh, goes forever. So these effects do exist uh, in an infinite standpoint in real magic, and usually the non-token clause is just to avoid those. And I kind of like the idea of a card that says, no, I can draw power from things dying, but I draw twice as much power from things that are non-tokens. And that just feels really flavorful, like tokens are somehow lesser, even if they're the same otherwise. Um, which I, just, I think that's fun. I think that's a cool way of using the non-token effect in a way we haven't really seen much before. I've never seen a card that does this in actual magic in myself. Um, as far as the actual card, 4 mana for a 3-4 is not great. Is it going to grow? Yes. Is it going to grow fast? Maybe. You can even play this and then, like, also sacrifice something or move to combat and threaten, you know, you know, trades and stuff to make it so that it, you don't even have to, like, stick it on the board. It might start growing immediately, which is really, really nice. So I think there's a lot of potential for this card. Enormous Puke! Enormous Puke did make it into the deck. Uh, it is a 4-mana, 3-3 three, three blue whale. Whenever Enormous Puke attacks, you may create a 5-5 five, five blue whale creature token. Whenever a creature dies, you may return Enormous Puke from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever I see from the graveyard to the hand, I'm always a little bit disappointed, because I... You could have gone to the battlefield. Come on, come on, there's AI. Why not let it go to the battlefield? But uh, this is just a good enough card anyway. Like... You're, you're making a 5-5 five, five every turn. Yeah, it doesn't have haste, so it has to stick around on the board. And it has to attack, so it threatens itself to die. Luckily, you can go back to your hand. But yeah, this card, it, it's a little bit more awkward than it could be. Um, I do feel like you could do something with giving this haste to make it a bit more reliable. but uh, Or flying. It doesn't even have any evasion. So a little bit disappointing, but I still think just generally strong power for card. I'm pretty sure this ended up in the deck. It must have, because I actually bothered to draw a token. Which is here! Haha! -ha! This is my whale token. It's a 5-5. Five five. I enjoy this whale token. It's fun to draw whales as just giant heads. Like the little Pac-Man things. Anyway. Port Culling Ship is a 2-mana two 2-1 two black human wizard. Port Culling Ship can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Tap. Target player draws a card. So... Obviously, that attack restriction is very limiting if you definitely don't have islands, but this guy's not trying to attack. They're going to tap themselves down and just draw you a card, which is, I mean, very good. Uh, obviously, I didn't go into black for a while. I was thinking blue-black, which is generally my favorite color combination, so no surprises there. But uh, yeah, two mana for a 2-1, which every turn is drawing you a card, I think is pretty okay. If this just said two mana, like enchantment, for example, beginning of your upkeep, draw a card... I think that's pretty good. That's a pretty good card right there. So just, you know, it's, yeah, it has, it's a 2-1. It can die. It's not it's not as uh, reliable as an enchantment. But still, it's pretty good. So I am happy with that. I think it's a cool way of having this, like, can't attack unless defending player. Like, the whole can't attack unless the defending player has an island is such a bad mechanic, right? Like, it's really bad. Um... But if you don't care about attacking, it's kind of like an interesting flavor thing that you could tack onto something without it actually hurting the card, which I think could be really fun. Caller of the Tides is a 4-mana 0-1 Blue Merfolk Wizard. You may have Caller of the Tides enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it enters with a plus-one plus-one counter on it. Pretty simple clone. I think clones are generally 4-mana for a, for a clone, and so this is 4-mana with a clone and a plus-one plus-one counter, which is pretty nice. I know in uh, Nuka Penna, there was a clone that was four mana, and if you cloned something you owned, it came in with a shield counter, and if you targeted something your opponent had, it didn't, that kind of thing, which, this this feels very similar to that, uh, except for instead of ignoring damage, it's just, it's a plus one plus one counter, but very similar effects as far as power, I would imagine. I would watch my step, 
but I can't help noticing that my heel is made of solid gold. I should be reading the flavor text for these. I'm sorry that I haven't been. I, it has not occurred to me. I will do that from here on. I'm not going to go back. Um, pause the video if you want to read them. <laughs> I'm sure if you were interested, you already did. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure why this got cut. I guess just a number of reasons you, you need to have something worth targeting at four mana it's kind of going right it's not like the pushed broken stuff that we're really going for most of the time so that makes sense the fact that it's not a whale is irrelevant because it's going to become a copy of something so you know Raphael whale poet is a four mana blue and red three three legendary creature human artificer I gotta talk to you about Raphael now Raphael exists purely because of I, I noticed in some flavor text, like one flavor text, mentioned Raphael, and I was like, ooh, Raphael sounds cool, I'm gonna try to make Raphael. And while all of the cards that I generated for this set were only using the deck name field for the Urza's AI deck builder, what I ended up doing was I just took Raphael Whale Poet and I put it in quotation marks, and I had that as my, like, keyword, as my deck name for the, um... For, for some generations, and I ended up with a decent number of Raphael cards. None of them were exactly what I was hoping for, but still, still very cool, and a lot of them ended up on the shortlist just because I wanted to talk about them. They, they seemed interesting and fun. So Raphael Whale Poet, four mana, obviously it's red, which I didn't end up playing, so that, that's a, a big reason that this one didn't end up in. But what does it actually do? When Raphael Whale Poet enters the battlefield, create two 2-2 two, two colors golem creature tokens. Artifact, or artifact creature tokens. Artifacts you control have tap, add red. That's a cool, yeah. I, I kind of forgot what this did over over how long it's been to create it, but yeah. It obviously has nothing to do with whales, which is very disappointing from a thematic standpoint, but cool effect. It's four mana. It's kind of like a, a, a four mana ramp spell, right? You have these two mana dorks now. They can't tap immediately because they're creatures. But it's also all artifacts you control have tapped to add red, which means that in a treasure deck, this could be really good. Right? You generate treasure and then you just immediately tap them for mana. They don't have to even crack. That's pretty cool. That's a fun card. The true beauty of Raphael, the sailor poet, is not the mindless cry of the brute, but the noble yell of the pure artist. Right, because they're a poet. Winterborn Whale is a 5-mana blue 4-4 four, four whale. Winter... Born Whale, can't be blocked. Simple, it's just a 5-mana 4-4 that has, like, super flying, right? Like, it can't be blocked at all, uh, which is great. Um, generally, in AI Magic, we can do better than this, in my opinion, but still a solid card. Definitely play it in other formats. The beasts of the sea are as a ghost in their stillness. Ugin, Hydra Chieftain. Gale Bellows. Now, I don't remember if this was in the deck or if it was just something I drew art for, but either way, we got some art, so let's take a look at it. Two mana, two, two, blue whale with flying. Whenever Gale Bellows attacks, it deals two damage to target creature defending player controls. If this card didn't make it into the deck, I wish it had. This is exactly the kind of thing that would have worked really well against B's deck. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen the gameplay video, be my partner played a goblin deck and just completely overran me it was brutal but <laughs> spoilers for that video i lose a bunch but yeah having something that can attack mostly i didn't have things that could come down very early in that deck and not only would this come down early and be a 2-2 flyer it's also pinging creatures which would have been very very good for me um I cannot say whether or not this was in the deck. I do not remember. I hope it was. This is this is great. As a pair, they add up to greater things. Mobad Halasa, ship's boy. Yeah, I tried to use the flavor text to inform my art whenever I whenever I added art to a card, so. They're a pair. Veiled Shade Drake is a five mana four four blue Drake. It has flying, and at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may put a creature card from their hand onto the battlefield. Uh, would that be useful to me? Maybe. Especially since, like, knowing what I know now, um, I had such bigger stuff than B did. Uh, giving her, like, an extra, like, two-mana goblin probably would have been worth it for me. Which is... 
Which is interesting, but it is such a brutal effect because you play it and then it doesn't it but it helps your opponent before it helps you. Unless you could like flash this on your opponent's turn, probably isn't worth playing in most games and formats. Also, of course, it's a Drake, and we were going whales matter. Only wanted whales if we could afford it. And again, it's five mana. You're already casting big spells. You don't need this extra effect. It's not really helping you cheat anything out. So totally makes sense that it didn't make the cut. Dusk Watch Sea Scout is a 2-mana, two 2-1 two blue merfolk scout. It is flying, and for blue, target player loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. Wow! That's great! <laughs> Holy crap! That would have been useful. Dang. Uh, I do wonder if I should have been less strict about my whole whale theme, because that could have been really useful! Just comes down early, you can start so spending mana. If you don't have anything you can actually play, like I had a lot of things that were kind of expensive. So if I play this on turn two, I might have nothing that I can actually play on turn three. And just a six life swing, 12 life swing, it's me up six, her down six. That could have been really, really good for keeping me alive through the game. Oh well, live and learn. Very cool card. I like that a lot. Drogni Tamer is a... 4 mana, 3-3 three, three, blue, legendary creature whale. I sh wish I had more legendary creatures in my deck. They're just fun. It has island walk. This creature can't be blocked as long as a defending player controls an island. And when dragon tamer enters, drogni tamer enters the battlefield, destroy target non-bushan creature. That's so good. Why'd this not make the cut? This is amazing. It's a 4 mana, 3-3 three, three that kills something on ETB. That's excellent. I have no idea why this didn't make the cut. I guess, like, I had a lot of stuff that cost four that was good i don't like i had a lot of good four costs uh which is kind of my problem i think i had too many good four costs it was it was kind of a problem anyway uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i just i wonder if this was better than what i ended up putting in the deck or not really hard to say but solid card very very nice i don't know what a bouchon is but unlikely that b was running any Crystal Shard is a 2-mana, two 2-1 two blue illusion. You may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do draw a card. Huh! That's really cool, actually. I Some of these cards I don't remember at all. I don't remember these cards at all. 2-mana for a 2-1 is not good. It's fine. It's worse than a Grizzly Bears. Uh, it doesn't even have flying. But if it's in your opening hand, you draw a card. I guess that's the thing, is like, it's a really interesting effect, but if you don't have it in your opening hand, you're not getting a benefit from it. And if you do have it open in your hand, you probably would have just rather draw, you drew something else, right? Like, that card draw is not really a big deal. If you just didn't draw this card, you would have been drawing a better card anyway. So it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weak, but, but cool. Killer Whale is a 2-mana, two 2-2 two blue whale. Killer Whale can't block. All creatures get plus one, plus one for each whale you control. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't run this thing. This would have completely destroyed me. What? B would have just destroyed me so badly with this. That's such a powerful effect, but it's all creatures. It's not all creatures you control. Or all creatures get plus one, plus one for each whale, like, their controller controls, right? That's so funny. Gonna make some babies, son. Reina Slave Whaler. I wish I hadn't read that now. Great. Good job, AI. Killer Whale, yeah. Two mana, two two. That's so funny. It can't block, which, I mean, is, is a downside. And it's buffing both boards. It's, it's no way this is ever worth running, but it's very funny. Wind Whirl is a two mana blue instant. Add blue for each whale you control. Sweet. I think I ended up with a spell that was, like, basically this exact spell, but better. It was, like, all each creature you control or something, but... Cool. A fun little ritual. But uh, the problem, of course, just being that whales are so expensive that by the time you have the number of them, it's not that helpful. So, I don't know. Grip me. Take me for a ride. Seaweed Pirate. Rites of Fury. Gravitational Wipe is a 3-mana blue instant counter-target spell. You gain 2 life. I ended up making kind of a lot of counter spells, which makes sense. Is blue. Blue's known for counter spells. Yeah, I made some, some counter spells. 
I don't know if this is better or worse than the counter spells I ended up using. I had some very, very strong counter spells. This one seems just mediocre. The staggered grins of the woeful display the twisted gears of the sea. Watery Graveguard is a 4-mana, 3-5 blue whale. Creatures you control have haste. Creatures your opponents control lose trample. I really like this one. This one, I believe, did go into the deck. And oftentimes, when you see me digging, just, like, trying to find, like, using Plunderhorn to draw cards, I'm hoping to find this. Because if I can give my creatures haste, that'd be really good. Haste is very good, <laughs> turns out. Especially when you have, like tap abilities like i could make a copy of a creature that tapped for mana but it wasn't relevant because i didn't have haste so that thing couldn't attack like couldn't tap immediately and if i had a watery grave guard down oh oh that would have been so good if i managed to get one but no this one never saw play i don't think we ever drew one that's just the way it is sometimes the grave guard stands over the drowned stilling their cries and feeding them to their fallen comrades i'm not sure if we've talked about this yet or not i think this might be the first card we've seen with it but yeah i i used a weird mix of like literal whales in my art when i drew them and whale people right because magic does that where it says this 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 cat man is a cat they're not like leonin is not its own creature type right so every once in a while i interpreted a whale as being like a whale person. And I thought that was fun. And yeah, the grave guard watching over the grave. Or at least the dead guy. I don't know if it's actually a grave or not. Consume Corpse is a three mana blue instant destroy target creature draw card. I ended up cutting basically all of my targeted removal because I had um, one sided board wipes. Now, if you've seen that video, you know that that one sided board wipe. Also blew up all lands, which was not intentional. I completely missed that that was how the card worked. Uh, and I wish I had just some targeted removal after all. Um, the only targeted removal that I think still ended up in the deck in the end was uh, Mind Control. Which is, you know, basically good enough. You'll not escape my sharp teeth, nor the hellfire in my blood. Garuk, wild speaker. But yeah, three mana kill something, draw a card. This is just a murder plus draw a card. It's great. Crested Rook is a 4-mana, 2-2 two, two blue bird wizard. It has flying, and Crested Rook enters the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus encounters on it, making it effectively a 4-mana, 5-5 five, five flyer. It's pretty good. Whenever a creature with flying blocks Crested Rook, remove a plus 1 plus encounter from it. So, I like this a lot, right? It's a, it's a very efficient flyer. It's a 4-mana, 5-5 five, five flyer, which is pretty good. Can you see that in real magic? Yes. So it's not really pushing the envelope a ton, but still very good. But it gets smaller every time it has to block a flyer or after every time it gets blocked. Um, as long as it's a creature flying, well, that's kind of, kind of interesting, right? Um, if it gets blocked by creatures with reach, it doesn't lose its stuff. I just think it's a fun design for a card. Like you can sort of imagine the narrative that's around this like bird wizard that's very powerful, but every time they get in a fight, they like get slightly weaker. Like that's cool. That's really cool. You wouldn't recognize this at first, but once I get my fill, it'll be twice as awesome. I do note also that it does say whenever a creature with flying blocks Crested Rook, it's you remove it immediately. So it can only block as a it it gets blocked as if it was a four four, um, which is potentially a big deal. Fire Shrieker. Hey, this is our first B card. Um, we actually saw this card in the gameplay. Uh, as I mentioned previously, B was playing Goblins. Uh, and so, yeah, Fire Shrieker is a 3-mana green 2-2 two -two Goblin Warrior. Whenever Fire Shrieker attacks, you may have it deal damage equal to its power to target creature defending player controls. This is actually very similar to what we saw uh, with that whale that I ended up not running. I don't think. Maybe I did run it. I can't remember. Um, where whenever it attacks, it deals two damage. But this, of course, scales, uh, which is really cool because, of course, as a goblin deck, B had a ton of lords buffing her entire team. So if this thing could get, you know, whenever when this attacks, it might not, not only be pinging for two, it might be pinging for three or four or five even. Um, very cool card. I don't know how actually strong this is in real magic because it's a three mana two, two. But it seems pretty strong when I played against it, I'll tell you that much. That's also Fire Shrieker. Why is this in here twice? Okay, I don't... I don't know what's up with that. 
Wrath of the Pantheon is a two mana blue instant. Creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain trample until end of turn. This, I don't remember if I, I think I did run this card. Yeah, I think, I think we see it in my hand a few times actually. Uh, it was intended to be a finisher. Like, if I could manage to get any sort of small board or get a couple, couple attacks through that were unblocked, I could instant speed, buff my team, and just try to close the game, which I think is super relevant, but didn't actually work because, uh, well, I wasn't like a big go-wide goblin deck like B was. So, um, when I won, it was because I just, I, my creatures were big. They didn't need this extra buff. As far as how this compares to real magic, I'm really not sure. It seems pretty good. Plus two, plus two, and trample for only two mana? I, I think it seems like a pretty good effect. Really hard for me to say. From within our hearts, we sing the blessing of the pantheon. All those who fight in the arena must understand their place. And if they fight with grace and with skill, may the victory light their way. Rakdos Evangel. Uh, of course, I made all of my cards whale-themed, even if the card didn't care about whales, just because it was a whale deck. So, this big, weird, godly whale blessing everybody. Seems good. Mog Meddler is an X and a red instant. Weird way of me saying that. It's a one-mana <laughs> spell that costs X and a red. Uh, it's an instant, and it says choose one. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until turn, and then other option is draw a card. I don't remember if we saw this from B or not. I think we might have. Um, but yeah, it's an X spell that's actually not an X spell. The X doesn't get used for anything, so it's basically a one mana, either draw a card, so cycling effectively, or giving something protection from a color of your choice, which is very useful. Uh, that can be a counter spell in situations that can let something be unblockable it's it's a it's a very good effect so yeah i like this card a lot works really well he has learned the taste of the blues that's so funny i mean if b ever cast this it would have been choosing blue because i was playing a mono blue deck so that's that's really that's fitting <laughs> that's really funny to me why do i have I must have accidentally put in two copies of every card that B ran. Ah, that sucks. I didn't realize. Oops. I don't know how that happened. Alright, well, I'll just have to click through those if that happens again. That's an accident. Flash Flood is a four mana blue instant counter target spell. Create a token that's a copy of that spell, except it's a five five and has trample. I don't actually know if this card works. I would love to hear people's opinions in the comments. Um... Like, four mana, create a token copy of a spell. Is a spell on the stack... If you copy a spell, are you making a token copy of a spell? I don't think you are. Um, the idea of, like, copying that spell and if it was a creature, it enters as a 5-5 five five with trample, that sounds kind of cool. I like... Like, the concept of this spell, I think, is cool. I don't think it's worded properly. But I like the idea, right? Counter spell... If it was a creature spell, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 5-5 five, five and that's trample. That's basically what it's saying. Which, cool. Rad. Look at the local school's map and ask yourself if there's anywhere you wouldn't rather be. Esbern, head of the Vidofnir patrol. So, I like it. I think it's really cool. I don't know whether or not it actually... I wonder if this card, if this card works. Let's just pretend that it does the thing that we want it to. Is it good? Because it, it's a 4-mana counter spell. So kind of expensive for counters magic, uh, but you're getting a minimum of a 5-5. Five, five. I think it's got to be great, right? Like, it's got to be great. Um, now, and, and but what I would interpret this as copy it if it's a creature spell. And then that, the, 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 the creature is a 5-5 five, five and has trample in it instead of its normal stuff. And with that, I think that's actually pretty good. I think that's really cool. It means that it's kind of like four mana counter a creature spell, make a 5-5, five five, but you may choose to you counter things that aren't creature spells if that matters to you, right? Uh, ideally, you want to be countering a creature, but don't have to. doesn't matter, right? You don't want to be spending four mana to counter a, like, dot and creature just to counter a spell with no upside, but might be worth it to you in the moment right that's the beauty of having cards that are flexible is that well 
This is what I need right now, so it's good enough. Phantom Warrior is a 2-mana blue 1-2 spirit. It is flying and, for 2-mana, return Phantom Warrior to its owner's hand. Oh, that's, that's additional cost. Okay. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Ooh, that's a cool spell. That's a shame that one didn't make it into the list. Again, like, not a whale, but... That's 4 mana? Resurrect something. Repeatably. Right? I mean, if you think of this like buyback. This is like a buyback spell. You're spending 4 mana, and you get this, this, this creature back into your hand. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, if you didn't enter, like, it's funny that I'm sure this didn't make the list because it is a creature. Like, because it's not a whale, I mean. But if this was just a sorcery, right? Or this, yeah, if this was a sorcery spell that said four mana, put something on the battlefield, return this to your hand, would I have run it? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure if I would have. Um, because four mana is a lot, even, you know, I, I have big four mana creatures that are probably better in a lot of situations. Um, depends if what's in the graveyard and what isn't. The fact that it's any graveyard is a really cool upside, but probably I want to be hitting my stuff because my deck synergizes with itself. The benefit of this spell, I think, is the fact that you can pay it two and then pay two the next turn, right? If this, this is a pretty cool two drop. Now, is anything in the graveyard on turn two? Probably not, but still. The fact that you can split up that cost onto two turns, I think, is a big benefit. That makes the spell a lot better than a than if it was just a sorcery. And of course it's a 1-2 flyer, which is fine. But yeah, no, that probably should have made it to the deck. That's that's rad. The living rise from the dead to claim their place in the afterlife. Did I already read that? I might have. Contraption is a two-mana blue instant. Untap all lands. This seems pretty good. I mean, you have to have a lot of lands for it to be relevant, right? If you only have two lands, then you're doing nothing by playing this. Um, it also untaps your opponent's lands, which, if they have instant speed stuff, is a downside. But if they don't, it doesn't really matter to you, right? So, that's a cool little, like, I, I quite like this design. This would be a fun card in Commander. <laughs> Where someone's like, I have a thing that I can do, but I don't have enough mana. And you're like, I got you. And you untap everyone's lands, and then someone else helps you, like, take down the, the Arch Enemy. But then the Arch Enemy, like, flashes on a bunch of stuff and destroys you. Ah, that sounds fun. I like that. <laughs> Is there a spell that does this in real magic? This is really cool. Only if the fool isn't hurt can he hear the humpback singing in the barnacle forest. Aw, Muse of Liar's Note. Oh, cool. This spell actually cares about, like, like not cares about, but, like, like the flavor of this actually is referring to whales. That's so cool. Ah, oh, I love this. This is great. All whales. Okay, let's talk about all whales. Uh... <laughs> When I was foraging, I have a moment where I was like, what if I just searched, what if the deck name was All Whales in quotation marks? Um, <laughs> because, you know, I want effects that affect all whales. They <laughs> just made a card called All Whales. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, all Whales is a five mana blue two four whale. All creatures get plus two plus two and gain double strike. So, Couple things. One, it's a five mana two three. Ah! Now, if it buffs itself, it's actually a five mana four five, so it's not that bad. With double strike, it's pretty good. It hits all creatures, which in is you and your opponent. That is a lot of creatures. Maybe you don't want your opponents having double strike. It seems pretty bad. I think if I played this, it would have hurt me. But two, I don't even know if this card works. Like, you know what it means, and I know what it means, but the wording on it is worded more like a like an instant speed spell, right? It looks, it's, it's like all creatures get plus two plus two and gain double strike until end of turn. That's how it's like worded. Whereas it should actually be like all creatures have plus two plus two and double strike. I think is the way you'd actually word this. Like we can interpret cards in ways that we understand that they make sense. So it's not a huge deal, but the grammar is off for if this card was doing the thing you actually think it does, right? If I am the chosen one, then we're all the chosen. Ixidor, Jadori Assassin Peak. Or is it Assassin Speak? Like it's like a, like a, like this is like a coded phrase. I don't know, I'm overthinking this. 
Dark Whale is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three elemental fish, not a whale. It has flying and whenever Dark Whale deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library face down. You may play that card as long as it remains exiled. Do I get to look at the card? Is it just does face down just mean my opponents don't get to see what I exiled? I don't know. My days are ruled by the rhythm of the ocean's depths. I'm driven by the whirlpools of nature, drawn like moths to the flame of life. I wonder who said that. Uh, this card's cool. Four mana, three, three. Again, I had a lot of four manas to competing for the those that prime spot, so. Not a whale. It is flying, which is cool. And if it can get through, which it probably can because it's flying. It's, it's like draw a card. It's kind of like draw a card. It's not It's not that, it's, it's, it's fine. It's not that big a deal. It's, it's draw a card. Cambal Park Sapiens! Yeah, it's our 5-mana blue 4-4 four, four whale. Whenever Cambal Park Sapiens or another non-token whale you control dies, return to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. So it doesn't, like, come back immediately. So there's a lot of, like, shenanigans. There's a lot of chains that it would not allow you to infinitely combo off with, which is good. Otherwise, I'm into it. Uh, this one is literally the same picture three times. Uh, I think that's very clear that that's what I did, but just to just to say it out loud, yes. Uh, yeah, these are some more whale people. I'm into these whale people. Uh, very powerful effect. It's five mana. It's 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 hard to get down, but once you do, it's just like your board can't go away anymore. You can get through the board because they don't come back till the next turn, but they don't even come back tapped. I had another card that came back every time it died, but it came back tapped, which meant you could kill it and then still get through without it blocking the next turn. So pretty, pretty dang good. It also is notable that it comes back at the beginning of the next end step. So if you kill this, the next end step is the end of my turn. It was the point I'm actually making. Sorry, I'm going off on the wrong tangent. Uh, if it was upkeep, they wouldn't, they, they'd come back with summoning sickness. But since it's end step, you're going to untap after they've come back. So they never have to, like, worry about summoning sickness again. It's very strong. Raphael, Serrated Executioner. Another Raphael is a 4 mana, 3-3 three, three blue illusion with flash. You may cast Serrated Executioner. That's fair i mean we, you truncate names sometimes on cards that's that, that that's established you may cast serrated executioner from your graveyard as a 2-2 two, two creature for three mana if you cast it from your hand it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus encounter on it what a weird card so it's a four mana four four if you cast it from your hand or a three mana two two if you cast it from your graveyard okay Huh, it doesn't really do much. I was saving most interesting Raphael cards for a while. It's not our size that's impressive. That that impresses. It's our capability to absorb a lot of damage. Raphael, Whale Poet. Yeah, I guess so, right? You die, you come back. Like, it keeps the flash, right? You can still cast it at flash speed, even if you're casting from the graveyard. Cool. I like the spell. I don't think it's amazing, but it is interesting. Again, it's not a size that impresses, but it can absorb a lot of damage. Charging Goblins is a 5-mana 3-3 three, three snow creature goblin. As long as Charging Goblins is in your hand, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have haste. This is the one, the standout, maybe most broken card that we saw in the entire showcase. Yes, it is a 0-mana uninteract like can only be removed via discard buff your entire team and give them haste effect it is wild goblins catch up whether it's your horse or a herd of goblins wild just absolutely bonkers never would you ever play this card it just sits in your hand really cool we've talked a bunch about how the wording on this is weird. Like, it should say something like, when you draw this, reveal it or something. Like, I don't I don't know how you would actually do this in real magic. Because the state of the board must be communicated at all times. So you can't just be like, yeah, I'm attacking you with this 3-3. Three, three, and you go, yeah, yeah, I won't block that. And they're like, oh, cool, cool, take 4 damage. Like, Why do I take 4 damage? Oh, for reasons. There's a card in my hand that says so. 
like, what? Yeah. Like, you have, you definitely need to be revealing this card, but also, like, what if you chose not to reveal it immediately? Would that be wrong? I don't know, right? It doesn't ever tell you to reveal it, so you'd have to do some some serious shenanigans if you actually if you actually try to make this card into real magic. And yes, it's charging combos against. Okay, so we got double of all of B's cards. That is an accident. I'll have to try and fix that in the next video. Squall Fleet is a two mana one two blue whale. It has flying and tap. Target creature can't block this turn. Cool. Just instead of. I know that I can't get through, but I can tap to make sure someone else can get through because your blocker can't block, or or I mean that um, maybe I can get through, but you've got a 5-5 five, five flyer and a 1-1 one, one flyer, and so if I can say that, like, your 5-5 five, five can't block, then, like, I it is purely in support of somebody else. So, yeah, because I'd, I'd, be I'd be tapped down. If there are seas, if the seas are our foes, let them beware. Squall. Thundermouth! Thundermouth is a 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, blue and black leviathan. It has flash. You may cast a spell anytime you cast an instant. And when Thundermouth enters the battlefield, destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Okay, I mean, it's a 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. The flash speed is a big deal. Um, yeah, I uh, just, <sighs> cool card. It's, it's not the most flashy. It's basically a five mana, five, five flash vanilla after it's ETB, right? Like it's really, it, like, yes, the destroys a big deal. Don't get me wrong, but it's a one-time thing. And then you have a five, five. It's not doing any ongoing ridiculous effect. It's just a five, five at that point. Very, very cool though. When a lightning bolt reaches the gulper shark's tongue, it releases a shockwave that saps the life force of all in its path. Wow, Thundermouth is weird. Cool idea for a Leviathan. Gatekeeper of Transity is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one blue spirit. We saw this one in the showcase in that I sideboarded it out, so I, 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 I took a second to talk about this card. Yes, it is a blue spirit, one of the few non-whales that made it into the deck. It has flying and Gatekeeper of Transity can't block. Whenever Gatekeeper of Transity deals combat damage to a player, that player mills 10 cards. Which is such a funny effect to me. Like, that is a quick clock. I mean... Yeah. That's really quick. Like, how many cards do you draw in a game? I don't know. Let's say you draw 10. That means this thing kills you in 5 attacks. Okay, so I had a miniature uh, mill theme. I did not end up actually doing anything with mill. It was not un like, it was not a mill deck. But if you were making a mill deck, holy crap, is that strong? Dang, two mana, one one flyer. Ugh, who cares that it can't block? I'm gonna mill you for ten every turn. Sea of Clouds is a four mana three two blue enchantment creature. Well, it has flash. It has flying. Super simple. Just a simple card here. Four mana, three, two with flash and flying. Great. Not good enough to get in the deck, unfortunately, but yeah, sure. An accidental fuse ignites the methane lakes beneath the clouds, unleashing a cascade of acid rain. That is... Sometimes the AI just comes up with such, like, weirdly evocative, like, fantasy nonsense. The lakes methane lakes beneath the clouds creating a creating acid rain just like the idea that there's clouds then lakes then like maybe the planet somewhere farther underneath there lakes of methane now is that like liquid methane or do you were just referring to like a layer of methane as a lake for some reason it's ah super interesting Mass Disrupt is a 2-mana blue instant counter-target spell. You gain life equal to its mana value. This should have been the deck. That's great. 2-mana two two counter spell? I'll take it. And life? Yes. That definitely should have made the list. I do not know why it didn't. If only it were that simple. Wendell Von Saar. School teacher. Cool. Orchard Sneakout Goblin is a 2-mana green 1-1 goblin. For two mana, target creature you control gains haste until end of turn. 
it can attack and tap no matter when it was kicked. Uh, which is some of my favorite reminder texts I've seen from the AI. Usually it just like copy pastes like a reminder text. I don't know why it ever gets it wrong, honestly, but it's, it's so funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we saw this one in the game. It's just a two-mana 1-1. One, one. Like, it's nothing special. I'm kind of amazed it made the list, honestly, but pff, who cares? Giving things haste? Good. Being a goblin? Good. It's fine. Thunder Drum is a four-mana 2-4 two, four blue whale. It has flying, and when Thunder Drum enters the battlefield, you may return a target creature to its owner's hand. Cool. It's a cute little bounce. It's kind of a small body. I'm sure that's why it didn't make it to the actual list. Um, like, if this just killed the creature, it'd be better. Why doesn't it do that instead? Eh. Why am I here? Good flavor text. Sunder. Ooh, I remember this one. For X and a red is an instant which reads, Sunder deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Then, Sunder deals X damage to that creature's controller. I would love to discuss how this card actually works. In the showcase, we saw B cast this. And the idea was that if I had pinged myself too much, she could have killed me with this spell before I was able to actually win. Um, now, I ended up countering the spell, so it was irrelevant, and she didn't have enough damage, but I'm actually not sure if she had enough damage or not. So, the way we interpreted it was, right, I believe that she said, oh, I'm going to spend, like, I don't know, let's say five mana, X is five, I'm going to hit one, kill one of your things for five damage, and then ping you in the face for five, right? What I wonder, though, it says, deal X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. If she had said X is five, I'm going to target five creatures for one damage each. Then Sunder deals X damage, five damage, to, to that creature's controller. Does that mean that if you said X is five and you targeted five creatures, you would end up doing 25 damage to the controller? Five for each of the targets. I think you would. The verbiage is weird, right? The grammar is a little bit broken on this card. It's not the way you'd word this card in real magic, right? Because there's no that creature. It's each creature's controller, right? But yeah, I think it would actually multiply the damage because it's not, it doesn't deal damage equal to what how much each creature took to the creature's controller, right? Each creature creates another X damage at the controller. Right? And we know this would work because if you targeted one of my creatures and one of your own creatures, we would each take X damage, right? We can all agree on that. So it stands to reason that if you targeted five of my creatures, I would take five, five times. So I think that B actually would have had me in the second game if I didn't have a counterspell. If I hadn't counterspelled Sunder, I think she would have actually had me. Uh, I don't think we would have noticed until like, you know the video got posted and comments started rolling in, but I did not realize how Sunder probably worked until much later. It's super busted. Holy crap. <laughs> it's so strong. <laughs> we took the storm glass, but we won't take your land. Jedebaran, Narlwood Elvish Shipwright. Sunder again, because as we saw, Zhu Hong Tremendous Hong is a 6-mana, six 6-6 six, six blue legendary creature whale. Ah, we love a legendary whale. Look at them. They're majestic. For 2-mana and tap, search your library for an artifact or a creature card. Put it onto the battlefield and shuffle. Holy butts. Now, would this ever survive a full round to be able to cheat something out? Probably not, but 2-mana cheat every turn? Yes, please. I would love this. It's also a tutor. It's not from your graveyard. It's from your deck. Wow. Just, ugh. I, I'm sure this one was in the deck. Uh, if Even if I drew it, I probably would never have been able to actually play it because it's six mana. So, you know, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. But, ugh. Oh, I wanted to play some cool legendary creatures that game. That's so cool. Hong or Phoenix has spread to the surface of the world and breathed life into its waterways. Yeah. Great Hearted Leviathan is a 3 mana 4 4 black Leviathan. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Okay. 
At the beginning of each end step, not just yours, if you sacrifice a creature for mana this turn, create a 1-1 black spirit creature token with flying. Huh! What a weird... What a weird... Trigger. I wonder if that works. Like, if I had a creature that says, like... Like an Eldrazi... Was it Spawn? Scion? Something like that? They, they have this ability that they say... Tap and sacrifice, gain one mana, right? It's it's like um it's like a treasure token, but a creature. That would count. You would sacrifice it for mana, right? The sacrifice is the cost, the mana is the result. But if you had something that was like I don't know, like if something said like when this dies gain mana, and you sacrifice that thing, that would not count, for example. It's just, it's very specific. Very, very specific. I don't know how I feel about this card. It's weird. Your cry will not be ignored. Baron, Wizard of Zalfir. Deep Sea Fish is a 3-mana 05 fish. Whenever a creature with Island Walk enters the battlefield, draw a card. That's so cool. That's that's a really cool. I, I love me some disproportionate cards like a 05. That's fun. The idea of Island Walk having payoff is really cool. I don't like Landwalk generally because I feel like it says, hey, this card's benefit, you're paying extra for this card's effect, right? If we think about a card being a series of effects that have then have their costs add up to being how much you actually pay, you're paying a premium because something has Island Walk. And the Island Walk won't show up in like, let's say, you know, four-fifths of the games you play. That's not entirely true because of multi-card decks, but if you're playing only mono, you're just not going to run into blue sometimes, right? And because of that, Landwalk feels really bad, and the idea of having a Landwalk matters deck because you have other things that care about the Landwalk is just very fun to me. We did see some Island Walk in the deck because they're whales, so the AI did that, but... Uh, wasn't enough that would make this effect relevant, but still very cool. I just, I like it as an idea. There's no tide in the deep, no flow to this course. The whale was once king of the deep, and you should take no liberties with its power. Gong. Midshipmander. Midshipmander. Huh. Entangling Belly is a 4-mana 2-3 blue whale. It is flying and, when Entangling Belly enters the battlefield, draw a card. Then, discard a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal a creature card from your hand. If you don't, draw a card. Ha! <laughs> what? So it's a 4-mana 2-3, it is flying. When it enters, you draw a card and discard a card. Cool. So you, you loot. And then at the beginning of your upkeep... You may reveal a creature. If you don't, you draw a card. So you just draw a card every upkeep. You just you just choose not to reveal a card. If it said, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal a card from your hand, if it wasn't a creature card, draw a card, that would be a bit more relevant. Because if you only have creatures, you'd be forced to reveal a creature and you wouldn't get to draw. Um, but the fact that it's a may ability is that even if your hand's only creatures, you can just say, I will choose not to reveal a card. And you draw a card. So it's just draw a card. Now the question is, Okay, sure, it's just draw a card. Is that even, is that still, is that good yet? Um, four mana, two through with flying that loots and then draws you a card every turn is like, I think that's just only fine. If this was cheaper, maybe, but like, yeah, I think that's just fine. My brothers had left for the fjords. My life was the ocean. Mulk. Ambusher whale! Watch out! It's an ambush! Ambusher whale is a three mana, three two blue whale with a knife! <laughs> It has flash, it has flying, and when Ambusher Whale enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact. This was like my only artifact removal in the deck. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it strikes first, but it doesn't stay around long. <laughs> what a great little... What, I, I love this one. <laughs> it's so good. It's just gonna show up, it's gonna kill something, it has to be an artifact, so whatever. I, I was not relevant at all against B's deck, let me tell you, but... Flash flying... It's good. It's a relatively cheap whale considering what my mana curve looked like. Yeah, this is a great little card. I love this thing. Sleeping Giant is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three blue whale with flying. 
That's it. That's it. Look, sometimes you just want to pay three mana for a three three with flying, and that's fine. Obviously, we wanted cards that were better than that, but I was still going to save this card in case that was the best we got. A nautical delight. Sleeping giants dance on the surface of the sea, making the horizon appear to boil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Whales are cool. I have a legitimate fear of whales, but I do respect that they're just, just, just cool. They can be cool and scary at the same time. Utopia Mastodon is a 3-mana 2-3 blue whale. Ah, oh, we saw this one in my deck intro, but it never got drawn or played during the actual game. Maybe it got drawn, I don't know. It didn't get played during the actual game. This one was kind of what the main build around was. Not build around, but like... I feel like if I drew this card, I'd be doing so much better in almost every game. Like, yeah, I had some cheat spells that could really let me get creatures on the field, and that would be great. But, like, every game I was sitting there being like, I don't have four mana, so I can't do anything. And this at comes down at three mana. I haven't even read the card yet. Utopia Mastodon is a three mana, two, three whale with whale spells you cast cost two less to cast just it's just exactly what the deck needed everything was too expensive making everything cost two less would turn my like four five six cost cards into two three four cost cards and it comes down on turn three if i just ever played this card my like really slow expensive deck suddenly becomes pretty cheap Ah, such a disappointment. Really, really cool card. Its penchant for disrupting established borders and seas has kept it out of the Galena territories for generations. I don't know what that means. Uh, I do want to mention that Mastodon, it, it says Utopia Mastodon, so of course I wanted to give it, like, tusks. You know, like, like a Mastodon. Um, you know, if you know the etymology of Mastodon, kind of necessary or the name makes no sense so ah uh, this card is like it's weirdly disappointing like it, it's kind of it's bittersweet to look at this card because it's so good and i never drew it <laughs> so, like, it's it's so good uh oh well Slaughter of the Week. This is the one I was talking about earlier. Slaughter of the Week is a one mana blue instant. Add blue for each creature you control, right? Earlier we saw two mana add one for each whale you control. Mm-mm. Add each creature. Much better. Uh, that's wild. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Ah. Oh. From the very first moment I glimpsed the giant school, I knew it was a place of epic, majestic strength. And I would be lucky if I even made it to that first moment. Journeyman Elk Shamans. Obviously, the problem with this card is that uh, I didn't have a go-wide deck. So... You know, turn three, I play a creature. Turn four, I play a creature. Turn five, I play this for two mana. Like, it's just, it's nothing. It's, it's... In another deck, this card is great. In, like, B's deck, it would have been amazing if she was playing, like, green-blue instead of green-red or something, right? Like, ah. Cool card. Kothop, Disciple of the Wild. Oh, this is one of B's cards. Yes. It is a three-mana star-star green legendary creature goblin shaman. Kothop, Disciple of the Wild's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Nice. Very, very good. Uh, it's such a weird... Yeah, I wonder how good this even is. Like, in real magic, I have no idea how strong that is. In her deck specifically, she didn't have, like, self-mill. Or, or not self-mill. I feel like this wasn't that relevant to her. But still, like, I do enjoy a good, you know, green-black self-mill graveyard. Creatures in Graveyards Matters deck in real magic. This would fit well into that. I am as eager to create the rest of my race as I am to create my own. I don't know what that means. Reef Whale is a 4-mana 3-3 blue whale. When Reef Whale enters the battlefield, you gain 2 life. 
For blue and tap, draw a card. The deeps of the maelstrom can still be dredged through their yield. Though their yield is scanty. Weird. Uh, cool. I mean, it draws cards, right? It's it's blue and a tap to draw a card every turn. It comes down real late. I think this is why it didn't end up in the deck. But, yeah. It's four mana before that effect comes online. Definitely. Yeah, too slow. Raphael's Drake, another Raphael card, cool, is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one blue Drake. It has flying when Raphael's Drake enters the battlefield. Put a plus-one, plus-one counter on each creature you control with flying. Most of the whales had flying. They just most did. Uh, I don't know why whales with flying was a thing. I like it. I like flying whales. Go watch Stereo by Nicola something. I can't remember. I should not be mentioning. It's a song. It's good. Go try and find it. It's called Stereo. It's spelled with a P. Anyway, uh, it's got whales. It's beautiful. I love that song. Raphael. <laughs> uh, yeah, so ETB, put a counter on each creature you control that has flying. It's great. I like it. If you play this early, it doesn't really do much. But it does hit itself, right? It doesn't hit each other creature you control with grind. So, yeah. It's at minimum a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with flying. That's fine. The wind howls and the earth trembles, and that's only when it's quiet. For Raphael, there is always sound, always movement, always change. I should make a Raphael, like like an Urza's AI Raphael commander deck. I don't know what Raphael would look like. I made a lot of Raphaels, but like... It was fun making Raphael cards because, like, there was, like, this weird story forming. Like, this is Raphael's Drake, and this is, like, Raphael, but you can see that are an illusion. So it's clearly, like, an illusion of Raphael. It's not actually Raphael himself. and uh, Super cool. Rainbow Flow is a three-mana blue instant. Choose one. Target player draws two cards. Fine. Creature Target creature gains Shroud until end of turn. Cool. I'm kind of surprised it didn't end up in the deck. It's not amazing. Like, you can do better card draw than three-mana draw two. And the idea of just, like, having the flexibility of, yeah, it's, it's like, um, you know, like any, any choose one card, right? They're not the most efficient version of what they are, but they have flexibility. And being able to give something Shroud into speed, great. That protects it from some stuff. That's excellent. We love that. Basically counters a spell if it's targeted, right? Stuff like that. And then you also can just use it to draw cards. I think this card's good. All I have are pictures of the glacier. Acera Heliod's Consort. Huh. Stealth Whale! Oh, look how stealthy that whale is. Stealth Whale is a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two blue whale. When Stealth Whale enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as Stealth Whale remains on the battlefield. Yes, that's right. Do you see the little legs sticking out of Stealth Whale's face? <laughs> what are you talking about? I got it fine. Shut up. What? No, there's nothing to see here. Love it. Shows up, eats somebody. If they die, the guy gets out of their mouth. It's excellent. It will always be remembered for its indifference to both winter and captivity. Halia de la Bog. Hydro whale captive. Hydro whale? Why didn't I think of that? Oh, I wish I made hydro whales now. That sounds awesome. What would that even look like? <laughs> like, how much of a whale's body is its head? <laughs> Do whales have necks? <sighs> I'm pretty sure this card made it into the deck. I hope it did. I needed more small bodies. It's very, very efficient removal. I like this card a lot. It's not even, like, an exile effect. It's just, like, it taps it down and then it doesn't untap. Cool. So if it dies, what I'm saying is that if it dies, you don't even get, like, ETBs a second time, which can sometimes be a problem with exile effects. Time Wound is a 3-mana blue enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Great. Huh. So, that means that basically what this reads is, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep... That player loses two life and you gain two life because on your turn you lose two then gain two, which I guess in a life gain deck matters, right? Like um like we saw earlier, there were some life gain cards in a life gain deck. This is very cool because you're hitting net zero by losing two and gaining two, but you're getting life gain trigger. That's really cool. 
We have little time. There is no need for diplomacy. Bashal Maskelion. I wonder... I ended up cutting all of the, like, life gain cards from the actual short, 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 short list. Um, and I wonder if some of them would have been worth running anyway, just because a little extra life gain might have helped me get there against the aggro deck that B had. But obviously I wasn't specifically trying to build a deck to counter an aggro deck. I didn't know what B was going to run. Malakir Goblin. Ooh, it's a fish horror. Malakir Goblin is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two blue fish horror. Sacrifice a creature, Malakir Goblin gains flying until end of turn. This, if you, so I think this one gets saved because it is a free sack outlet, right? If I cared about having a sack outlet, this is very efficient. It's a 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. You don't really get much of an upside from the sack, but it's free. That's sometimes all you need. So I think that's why it got saved, but no, nah, it, it's super not relevant for what the deck ended up being. A demon's worst nightmare is being woken up to find yourself sharing a body with a bug. What? Maureen, expert rider. <laughs> that meant nothing to me. Whale rider is a 2-mana two 2-1 two blue merfolk wizard. I'm into that, right? We see this all the time in Magic where, like, I'm riding a hippogriff, and it's like, in the art, you just see a hippogriff and, like, a little tiny person on the back, and you barely even notice them. Uh, but... It's not a hippogriff, it's like a cat, because it happens to be a cat person riding them or whatever, right? Um, so yeah, whale rider. If you drew a picture of this, you'd draw a big cool whale with a merfolk wizard riding it. But it's, it's a merfolk wizard. When whale rider enters the battlefield, draw a card. When whale rider dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. That's not bad, honestly, because it's two mana. Like, if this is more expensive, the fact that it's bouncing to your hand every time it dies isn't that big a deal. But for two mana, you cast it, great. It dies, you draw a card, you cast it for two. It's, like, two mana draw a card is not great, but, it, you know, two mana get a 2-1 chump block. Two mana get a 2-1 chump blocker. When it dies, you draw a card, do it again another turn. That's pretty solid. When it comes to sea survival, a tail is worth two tails. Sokar, a Atlantean Fisherman. I'm not going to question that. Disciple of Thassa. Hey, it's Disciple of Thassa. It's a two-mana, one-one blue human wizard. Whenever Disciple of Thassa attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. Hmm. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Interesting. I guess if you have something that's like when a creature dies, or something that has, like, good ETBs, that is a cool ability. The fact that it's a 2-mana 1-1 one, one does make it a little bit fragile, right? Like, this has no evasion, unless you give it unblockable or flying, um, or, or something. It's just going to attack and die, and you're going to get that trigger one time. And it's not, like, the most broken trigger. It's a really interesting trigger, which you could definitely do some shenanigans with in the right deck. But it's a little bit fragile on its own. It needs it needs support. It's a cool card, though. I like it a lot. It's not that I believe in the Prophet's mythic powers, but that's what I'm after. Huh. Fair enough. Carrying Whale is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, blue whale whose deep waters holds all that we've discovered. Its home is a mystery. When Carrying Whale enters the battlefield, draw a card. <laughs> I love it when the AI does that. Um, how good is this card? It's a 3-mana three 3-4 three, that ETB draws a card. That's fine. It's not amazing. It's fine. Um, the fact that it's got this, like... I guess you'd, you'd interpret that like flavor words, right? Where it's like, when this enters the battlefield, draw a card. The flavor word for that is, Whose deep waters hold all that we've discovered? Its home is a mystery. And that means when it, you play it, you draw a card. I don't know. I just think that's fun. When we find the sea itself, we'll know what it truly is. Zavin, biologist. No one knows anything about the sea. Skyclave Whale is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two blue whale with flying. For blue, the next time Skyclave Whale would deal combat damage to a player this turn, it deals double that damage to that player instead. Huh. Okay. Can you keep paying? Like... I don't really know how doubling effects like this work. If I'm attacking you, 
okay? And you say no blocks. And I say, okay, cool. Before damage, I'm going to pay blue five times. The next time this would deal combat damage to a player this turn, double that damage. Okay, so I'm doing four damage to you. Oh, oh, but also the next time, double that damage. So I'm doing eight now? Is that actually how that works? Or is it just like... Is it either doubled or not doubled and that's the end of it? Or does it no longer count as combat damage? I don't know how that works. I think I've been told that it does work and you can just jam this, making this kind of super flippin' busted. Um, okay. Great, maybe I should have ran this. Three mana, two, two. Great. Once those with keen eyesight can avoid the attacks of a Skyclave Whale... Oh, only those with keen eyesight can avoid the attacks of a Skyclave Whale. Shazmi Ghoul Nymph of Kosala. Ooh, they seem cool. Sea Knob Carrier is a 2-mana 0-0 zero, zero blue fish that enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. For 3-mana, create a 0-0 zero, zero blue shark creature token. Ah, yes. This is one of those things that could theoretically be very useful if you have the right deck. I did not have the right deck, so it did not end up in the deck. But pretty cool. Also, they're fish and the sharks, not not whales, but whatever. Uh, yeah, it's a two mana one one that makes zero zeros. So they show up and they die, and they show up and they die, and they show up and they die. For three mana, probably not good enough. But in the right deck, potentially very strong. Maybe you just want them to die. Maybe you just want to see creatures die. I don't know. Goblin Scouts is oh interesting. Okay. Goblin Scouts is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two red goblin. For 2 mana and tap, search your library for a goblin permanent card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. That is great. Holy crap. What a powerhouse. It's only a couple of mischievous goblins, and we've been watching them from a safe distance. Hmm. Dang. 3 mana for 2-2, two, two. then, on a future turn... For two and tap, unless they have haste, which they might, because goblin deck. Two and tap, search your library for a goblin, put it onto the battlefield. It says for a goblin permanent card. I guess that's right. That's a weird way of wording it, but yeah, sure. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. It means like if you had a like a like a tribal card, right? That was like sorcery goblin, that wouldn't you wouldn't be able to use that. Which makes sense, because you're putting it onto the battlefield. Scariest goblin tutor ever. That is nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Shimmer Scale Shanker. <laughs> okay. Shimmer Scale Shanker is a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two blue Leviathan. Whenever Shimmer Scale Shanker attacks, you may exile target creature and opponent controls until Shimmer Scale Shanker leaves the battlefield. Wow. That's, that's so good. What? So it's a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. If it survives the round, you attack, you exile something. It's on attack, not on damage. So you exile something, and then you, you just, every turn, you get to put something in the bag and just keep putting things in the bag until it dies. It's a 2-2. Two, two. So when it dies, a bunch of things are coming back, and it probably will die, but... Wow, that, mm, that's so good. A Whisper in the Deep Shallows. What? Wait, the deep shallows, what does that mean? A whisper in the deep shallows is its song, and the high and low tones rouse the huge and mighty in their quiet slumber. Stabber whale! <laughs> Not like the ambusher whale, which was totally fine and safe and didn't have a knife. Stabber whale is a two mana, two one blue whale with flash. When stabber whale enters the battlefield, you may return target's instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Dang, that's really useful. Hmm. On one, its leadership is remarkable. On the other, it's quite handy. Wait. <laughs> the quotes last for the entire second half of that. Turok, hated survivor. All right, Turok, sure. Maze Engine is a two-mana blue instant. Tap all creatures target player controls. You gain two life for each creature tapped this way. Dang, that's awesome. That's so good. Oh, that would have been so good in that game. It's like before combat, I'm going to tap down your entire board and heal. And now you have no blockers and I'm going to attack you and kill you. It's going to be great. 
I can't help but wondering what's in there. Sethron. No, that card's excellent. I have no idea why I didn't run this. This looks amazing. Exact maybe I guess I kind of just didn't run anything that was life gain, and I really should have, it turns out. Lightning Whale is a 2-mana two 2-1 blue whale with flash. When Lightning Whale enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. Oh, I should read the flavor text. I keep forgetting to do that. Their thrashing tales of conquest were recorded in seafloor trenches and sunken shanties. Sunken shanties. <laughs> nice. Wizard of the Whale is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two human wizard. I like that. It's not a whale wizard. It's a wizard of the whale. Cool. Of that tradition. When Wizard of the Whale enters the battlefield, it becomes the owner's creature type. Reminder text. It retains its other types in addition to its new type. Okay. Whenever Wizard of the Whale attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is definitely saved just because I wanted to talk about how weird this is. This is nothing. It's a three mana, three, three, kind of. Like, it's, it's nothing. When Wizard of the Whale enters the battlefield, it becomes the owner's creature type. What's my creature type as the owner of this card? It becomes a human? Is that, is that what it is? It becomes a human artist? <laughs> it's that's, I, I would love to see that on an unset card. That would be really fun. It becomes the owner's creature type. Like, what's the owner's creature type? Human? It's human, probably. Reminder text. Most <laughs> most owners are the creature type human gamer or something. I could definitely see that. That would be that would be fun. Yes. Do that, Mark Rosewater. <laughs> Is this not my life's work? The destruction of Minsk and Boo? That is what we are here for. What? What does this have to do with Minsk and Boo? <laughs> Nightmarish Rager. Okay, so now we're not getting duplicates anymore. I don't I don't understand. Nightmarish Rager is a two mana one two green goblin shaman. It has menace and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Yes, I recall this card. It hurt a lot. It gave me a lot of card draw. I discarded her entire hand at one point, and the next turn she was already at like four cards in a hand, and I was like, oh, all right, I guess that didn't work. Whenever a creature, yeah, okay. Shamanists, shamanists howl at the moon and watch as it disintegrates. The Ruin Song Prophecy. Huh, cool. Pearl Whale is a 2-mana blue 1-2 whale. Whichever player controls the most whales has an additional turn after this one. <laughs> so, as a static effect, my understanding is like, does that just mean like at the end of every turn you check and then whoever has the most whales gets to take an extra turn and you just do that for the entire rest of the game? Like this card just clearly just doesn't work. It just doesn't work at all. The idea of an effect that's like at, at the end, at the beginning of the, ne of the end step, the player with the most whales takes an additional turn after this one. That would kind of work, right? It'd be like, okay, it's my turn. I have more whales than you. I'm going to go to my, I'm going to take an additional turn. And then again, and then again, again, which obviously has no interaction, but like the idea of, of something like that, where it's like, I don't know, the beginning of the end step, whoever's the most, I don't know, like tapped. I, I don't know. I, I, there's no way to do this type of effect in a way that would be fair. You would just take infinite turns, but the idea of like every turn checking and it like switching back and forth. The beginning of your end step, not your end, at the end, your end step? I don't know. Uh, whoever's taken the fewer, fewest extra turns this game, take an extra turn or something would be kind of fun. These were just the right size to keep my fingers warm. Elaine. Hmm. We're, I, I, this card has just like completely bested me. I, I have... I can't make words happen anymore. <laughs> Rift Fever is a two-mana blue instant. Destroy target creature. Its controller may search their library for a card named Rift Fever. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Okay, so Rift Fever is not a permanent. So if this was a, like, 
a creature that had ETB destroy target creature its controller may search, that would be pretty interesting. It means you could like sack a bunch of small things to get like cheat out these 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 creatures by searching your own deck. Or you could hit your opponent and they're probably not running Rift Fever, so they just get nothing. That would be cool. But seeing as this is an instant, instead this is just a two mana kill spell. Period. That's all it is. Even if you search your own library and find other copies of Rift Fever, they just stay in your library because they can't go into the battlefield. Right? I will wash this world of the taint of our last two summers. Gerard of the Weatherlight. Yeah, you've had a you've had a t rough few years, haven't you? It's Raphael Whale Poet again. Uh, it's a two mana two one blue Merfolk Wizard this time. I don't know if I prefer Raphael Whale Poet as a human wizard or a Merfolk Wizard, but I do feel like they're a wizard. Tap target creature can't be blocked this turn. Pretty boring effect. I prefer it when the river speaks and when I speak it back to it. What? And when I speak it back to it. Sure, whatever you say, Raphael. Magma Whale is a 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three blue Leviathan with flying. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a swamp, Magma Whale deals 1 damage to each creature and each player. Wow. That's cool. Pings the whole board. Could be useful against some goblins. I mean, most goblins didn't have 1 life, 1 toughness, because they were being buffed by, like, plus 1 plus 1 by, like, 3 different times. It's, it was a mess. Uh, cool. I like these sort of effects where you are encouraged to play in specific colors, but not restricted, right? It's just a swamp, right? Uh, it doesn't actually cost black mana or do anything like that. Just, just a yeah, swamp. You control a swamp. I think it's cool. Plunderhorn, our beloved Plunderhorn. The maybe most broken card? Maybe? Mm? I already said that once earlier to this video, but that's fine. Plunderhorn is a 3-mana, 1-3 blue whale with affinity for artifacts. This spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. Uh, as you may remember, in the showdown, I didn't have any artifacts in the deck. That was not the point. It's just that good anyway. Uh, but yes, it's a 3-mana, 1-3 that says, pay one life, draw a card. That's it. Just, it, it, it. Yep. The water is riled by the rush of the tide. The creak of the keel is drowned by the thrum of its engine. What a wild card. Hasty Goblin is a 4-mana 2-1 green goblin with haste. That makes sense. Whenever Hasty Goblin attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. Cool. Just find your lands. It's a pretty solid ramp. It's four mana, but whatever. It's got haste. Don't have to, like, wait a whole turn or anything. Jund Smasher is a one mana, one, one green goblin with goblins you control. Get plus one, plus one. Cool. And I'm still not sure if the grammar's right. That should be have, maybe? I don't know. For generic mana, Jund Smasher deals one damage to target creature. Very efficient pinger. Buffs all of your goblins, including itself. So it's a two mana, two, two at minimum. This card's absolutely out of control. We love to see it. Jumping Whale is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two blue whale. For blue, target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 oh until end of turn. For blue, blue, and tap, draw a card. Cool. Great. That's a very efficient buff, right? It's, it's, it's double effective fire breathing, and it's any target creature. It doesn't have to target itself. Uh, or you can use it to draw draw cards. Draw, draw one card a turn because it taps. Uh, Excellent card. No idea why this didn't make it into the deck. Absolutely unsure. They seem oblivious to danger as they cut the waters with nothing more than their bellows. Huh. Aquatic Swimmer is a 2-mana, two 2-2 two two blue whale. Whenever you cast a water spell, draw a card. I forgot about this one! I tried to see if I could make the, uh, the AI make me water spells. I don't even know what that would be. I guess, like, the creature type would be water, probably. Unless there was, like, instant water. <laughs> so funny. It's, 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 I don't know. It's absolutely nothing, but here, here we are. A silky serpent with tiny antlers sways lazily, as if the kelp were soft cloth, were a soft cloth, and the current a gentle breeze. Aww, I want to draw a silky serpent with tiny antlers. 
That sounds so nice. I love it. What a cool little card. In the comments, leave uh, your ideas for what a water spell might be. <laughs> Ethereum Harpooner is a 2-mana 1-3 blue elemental. It has death touch, any amount of damage, this deals to a creature, so have to destroy it. And for blue, tar choose a non-wall creature with flying. Target creature's controller creates a 1-1 one, one blue golem artifact creature token. Ha! Huh. That's just one mana make a 1-1, one, one, as long as you control a non-wall creature with flying. And Ethereum Harpooner is a non-wall creature. Oh, no, not without flying, with flying. Okay, cool. That's right, you have to have at least one flyer, and then if you have at least one flyer, ba yeah, basically this means one mana, if you control a creature with flying, make a 1-1. One, one. That's what that means, right? Um, I mean, that's pretty efficient. One-to-one -one making one-ones sounds great. I would do that. It takes a single strike to sink the vessel. The fact that it doesn't, like, tap. The fact that you can just, like, sink mana into this. That's such a good mana sink. I love that. Untap this. <laughs> Untap this is a two-mana blue instant. Draw two cards, you gain two life. Look at that! What a great little card draw spell! <laughs> Why didn't this make it into the deck? This is awesome! The ocean is a fine place to wait out an appointment. I guess I just had better draw spells than this. I don't know. Whiteout is a 3 mana blue instant. Whiteout deals 2 damage to each creature. That could have been good, but when you have a 3 mana destroy all non-whales and you don't realize that that hits your lands, uh, you end up just using that spell instead. Uh, when this would have probably been better for me. Oops. Fracture is a 2-mana blue instant. Destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. Now, a 2-mana kill spell probably should have made it into the deck. Because the destroy all non-whales was 3-mana. So it would still have value to be a 2-mana kill spell. That probably would have been good. We're glad you chose to remain standing, Adwalin. Lady Zorana, Malakir Gateguard. Hmm. Raphael Whale Poet. The real, the true Raphael Whale Poet. The one that I actually drew art for. And that's why. Right, this is why we didn't see uh, <laughs> other lesser draw spells. Raphael Whale Poet is a 2 mana, 1 3 blue human wizard. For blue, target player draws 2 cards. Yup, that's it. Is that as good as a plundered horn? No. But is it silly strong? Yes. A rare instance of feeling no pain. No, not like the cold callousness of a pirate. I speak only of the common oblivion of the living. I want to know more about Raphael Whale Poet. I can't believe... One time I actually tried to record a video where I was like, I'm going to name a legendary creature and just search for it in quotation marks and that have that be the video in Inner's AI, right? Like like make a deck name that was that. Because I had just got finished making a bunch of Raphael cards and I was like, that was so cool. I gotta do this on stream sometime. And I got nothing. It, I got absolutely no good results from that. It was a such a disappointing video. It didn't like I just I just deleted it. Like I didn't bother actually doing anything with that footage. But, like, I would love to be able, like, it's such a fun video concept of just, like, we're gonna make a million cards based on the name Raphael Whale Poet. Go. There were so many good hits. Ah. Ah, Raphael Whale Poet's so cool. Petal Dancer. Is that the beginning? Did we just loop around? Yes! Two mana, two, two whale! Whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on Petal Dancer. We are here. We're back at the beginning of the list. So you know what that means. It's the end of today's video. Please join me again next week when we'll be looking at the next batch of cards. Uh, because there were some duplicates in this one, I have no idea how many are going to be in this batch versus the next batch. Um, but, you know, stay tuned and check it out, I guess. I don't know. Tuned is such a weird term. It refers to a tuning dial on an old timey TV set. <laughs> or radio probably radio now that i say that out loud either way they both had tuning dials so same same anyway i've been darcy bits 
hope you all have a great night. Uh, this has been the first batch of the shortlist Magic AI bat like set one showdown thing. Whatever. I'm tired. Have a good night, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.